Okay, good morning, seventh graders. Uh, here is your job for today once these slides load. You're gonna talk about prehistory and life in the Paleolithic age. Today's notes will include our first ancestors making stone tools, using fire, and developing the ability to speak and work together as a species to migrate and move and adapt to their climate. Yesterday, your assignment was this, um, to go and read the two articles, Stone Age Family, and living in the Stone Age. So if you haven't done this yet, please do. Question on top of your notes asking you to, to list two things you learned from this assignment. So please do that before you begin the notes to review from yesterday. Okay, so as we've talked about, there is a human family tree and there are many species of or bipedal um, primates found in our human family tree. So the first one is talking about Homo habilis. So Homo habilis is a human ancestor who had a larger brain uh, than previous human ancestors. And this larger brain allowed them, was because of a better diet. So we're eating a little bit more meat, higher protein gets to a bigger diet so you can develop a larger brain over time. Homo habilis is the first human ancestor to start making uh, stone tools. And they were around, their species was around for about a million years. They lived roughly two and a half million years ago until one and a half million years ago. If you click this link, there is a human family tree. Uh, you can look and see the different species. I'm just going to focus on three important ones today. Later in the week, you'll have a project about um, uh, figuring out one of those species to look at. So Homo habilis is the first one to talk about. Second one is Homo erectus. Another important ancestor is Homo erectus. They are the first human ancestors to migrate or move out of Africa and control fire. They live from about 2 million years ago to 100,000 years ago. So they had a long lifespan. If you notice from the previous slide and compare, they lived at the same time as Homo habilis. They were on the planet at the same time, those two species. Um, they also migrated from one region on, um, to another, so they were the first to leave Africa and migrate in search of food and safety. Uh, here is a scientific reconstruction of what they might have looked like. They are also perhaps the first species to ever have created art. So this etching of, on a shell shows some, like a pattern, and we believe that this was done by Homo erectus. Our last ancestor is Homo neanderthalis, or better known as Neanderthals. Um, they are another important human ancestor from the hominid family. Neanderthals lived in Europe and Central Asia, and their species lifespan is about 450,000 years ago until 40,000 BC. They definitely lived during the same time that Homo sapiens, our early ancestors were around. Neanderthals are very adaptable species. They made clothes to adapt to colder climates. They, we have cave paintings that Neanderthals may have done. They even interbred with Homo sapiens. So um, if your family's ancestors come from Europe or Central Asia, there's a decent chance that they have some Neanderthal DNA in them. They are the last human ancestor to go extinct, and there is a debate in the scientific community about whether Neanderthals went extinct because they got into wars with Homo sapiens because the climate changed, or if they were just, their numbers were so much smaller and they were absorbed into our species through interbreeding. So there is some debate about why they are no longer alive today. There's a video about Neanderthals. Please watch this. It will give you some more information about them as a species. Um, they're pretty cool, and it talks about the interbreeding and the theories for why they are no longer around. So review. Stop, pause the video. Go back in the last three uh, slides in your notes, and for each human ancestor, write down one interesting fact from Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and Neanderthals. Okay, now we're going to talk about migration. So this is from, should have been a topic we talked about in your first Jump Starter reading, but about 100,000 years ago, some groups of Homo sapiens began to migrate out of Africa. Um, as we did, as we moved, we met other human species like Homo erectus and Neanderthals. Homo sapiens were allowed, developed the ability to speak and use 
language. This allowed us to communicate and to migrate. This map shows how our ancestors, Homo sapiens in red, evolved in Africa. And then the arrows show how we migrated. The numbers are about the time period in um, thousands of years ago that we got to different places. So you can see how we moved out of Africa into Europe and then into Asia, into Southeast Asia, and then we crossed the land bridge into North America and down into South America. The other colors on here show the other species. So there's the yellow is Homo erectus. So you can see that we met Homo erectus along the way. We have Homo neanderthalis in Europe and Asia, and we also met Neanderthals. What was it like to live in the Paleolithic age? Your articles from yesterday should have talked about this kind of stuff, but you have Paleolithic peoples, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Neanderthals, and Homo sapiens. These four groups were all nomads. A nomad is a vocab word, and it means people who move from place to place in search of food. So they are not living in one village and farming, they are moving around and they are searching for food. Paleolithic people often lived in small bands of about 20 to 30 people, and they survived what we call hunting and gathering. There are still some groups around today that hunt and gather as their primary means of getting food. However, most people today do not do that. Hunting and gathering is a type of society where people survive by hunting animals and gathering edible plants. Sometimes they have small farming involved, and sometimes they would have domesticated animals that they would eat as well, but mostly they're hunting the wildlife around the area and gathering uh, food. That's one, as in the vocab word as well, hunting and gathering. It's a type of society. What was it like to be a hunter-gatherer? So if you lived in one of these Paleolithic bands, the work in the group was usually divided by gender. Women often gathered plants and berries, and they provided most of the food for the group. Gathering was the majority of the food source. The men often hunted in groups to provide meat. And meat is really important during this time because it's, it's over time as our species eats more meat, we are developing bigger and bigger brains, letting us um, evolve and do more things with technology we'll talk about here in a minute. The higher levels of meat allow for the development of larger brains over generations and helped evolve our species forward. Contrary to popular belief, uh, hunting and gathering was not a bad lifestyle, okay? Uh, usually you're only hunting and gathering for about six hours a day. Uh, at the moment, you guys go to school for eight hours a day. So they had more free time than you do. Uh, however, there were higher murder rates. Uh, there were, you know, people did get eaten by uh, animals sometimes. So it was not like perfect world, but they did have a more relaxing life in some cases than we did. It was not all nasty, brutish, and short. Here's a video about how taming fire um, with our earlier species like Homo erectus and Neanderthals allowed for the development of bigger brains because we could cook meat. So please watch this video. It's pretty interesting. It talks about why fire is so important to our species. Inventing tools is the next important thing that our early ancestors did. So the word technology, uh, we think about that as being like our phones and our computers and our internet. Technology for um, Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalus was stone tools. So technology would be tools and knowledge used in a practical way to perform tasks. So earlier tools were made from flint, things like spears, bows and arrows, fish hooks, scraping knives, early shovels. All these things are being made from bone and from stone, and they are being used to, um, to perform tasks like hunting and fishing and even fighting sometimes, or digging up roots. Here's a video about making stone tools where a modern day archeologist shows you the process of how to create a stone tool um, using a bone hammer and making flakes of flint. So please watch this, it's pretty interesting and it shows how our ancestors would have made these stone tools. Next thing that we helped us develop was collective learning. So Paleolithic people developed an important skill and this is the able to share knowledge and pass it along from generations. So collective learning means sharing information with one another and passing it on to a new generation. 
Today, this looks like a library, right? We can store all of our books and we can go and find and read books that have been written hundreds of years ago and learn from the past and build on their past knowledge. School is an example of collective learning, right? Myself and other teachers are teaching you skills that have been learned from your ancestors hundreds of years ago and making sure that you understand them too. The internet is an example of collective learning. You can watch YouTube videos like I'm having you do in this lecture to understand important topics. Another important skill is oral history. Oral is the word that means mouth, and so it means like mouth history or passing down important stories by word of mouth. And so our early prehistoric peoples, they had their own myths and their own stories about how the world was created. And this is, we get the development of like things like religion and things like um, origin stories and myths. Next week, you will do a project about oral history. We will have to get a story from your family and share it with the class. So that's an oral history or passing down important stories by word of mouth. So these two things let us create culture. They let us build on our previous learning and develop technology as a species. Here is a video about collective learning and why it's important for our species and how it helped us evolve uh, from our ancestors. Last thing is the ice age. So fire, clothing, shelter, all these things we have developed in the Paleolithic age and it lets us survive a climactic change. So the ice age happens at the end of the Paleolithic age and it's a period of global cooling that results in the formation of large glaciers and ice sheets. When these glaciers and ice sheets form, they are forming from the ocean water. So the ocean water is melting and this means that the sea level is lower and there is more land to move places. Um, so the first people to settle in North America, we believe crossed a land bridge between what is now Russia and Alaska. There is a small piece of, land, of water at the moment called the Bering Strait. However, it is believed that during this time, uh, it was actually a land bridge and you could walk from Russia to Alaska. And we have evidence that early humans migrated into North America from Russia by crossing this land bridge. And so that has happened during these ice ages when there were land, uh, land was exposed because the sea level had frozen. The last ice age ended about 10,000 BC, um, so not that long ago. And it's believed that migration to the Americas took place during this time. If you've ever seen the ice age movies, they are based on the different animals that lived during this time period. Uh, so your last thing for today is a funny video of Scrat and the acorn. So please make sure that you have done those notes. At the very end of your notes, there is a vocab chart. And these talk about the words that we've learned, not only from today, but also from early, this whole week. Um, we will do a review game about these terms on Monday. So please make sure that you have finished this as well. Okay, thanks guys. Uh, have a great day and I will talk to all of you um, tomorrow.